Hey guys, how you going? I'm just about to give you an update on our Connor Street Tarragindi project. So the boys have been on site here for four days. Um, we've started doing all the demolition work, all the, the carpentry demolition work, and now we've got the big machines on site. So come with me, I'll give you a look through. Um, as usual, uh, we've got a full job schedule on this one. Everything's set out, it's all organised. Um, the surveyor, we've actually got the surveyor on site this morning. So um, Dale's going through, he's going to give us a datum height on site. So um, We've got a, a permanent reference mark on site. Everyone knows where it is, it's protected, and everything gets worked out off that. So there's no guessing, um, and we don't have to try and relay marks from out on the street back into site. We've got one in the site. Uh, he's also going to mark all the grid lines around the perimeter fences for us. So there's no issues with set out. It's all done, it's all correct. Um, it all meets council requirements and that way we can these guys will provide us a proper set out certificate to give to the certifier um, at the end of the job when we're trying to get our final certificate so very really good way to do it and make sure um, all your I's are dotted your T's are crossed so um, got our demo trailer so man this thing is working so good so on these small sites we don't have good access we can't get big bins in this trailer is paying for itself ridiculously so um, I think we're up to about a fifth load on this job. So come in here. So um, yeah, boys have been smashing it on this one. It's a little bit different here. We've got two trees at the front of this one that have, the owner wanted protected. So you can see there, we put our temporary fencing around them. Um, bit of a special story about those trees um, that I'll tell you later, but um, they cannot get damaged. So we're protecting them. It's what the owner wants. So we're going to look after them. Um, so the front of the house, the boys have removed all the old stairs, um, they've just got a load here, they're lo currently loading the trailer up, that'll be our last lot of demo rubbish, so you can see here, we have completely stripped the underside of this house, um, compared to the first video, and now we've got Billy, so we've got Billy at the back there on his excavator, so he's on site today, we're going through um, and we're starting to rip up all the existing concrete so you'll see down there we've got a pile of pavers over there um, he's already scraped all the rear there was a little sort of driveway fire pit area down the back he's got all that out of the way there's a stump grinder coming in in tomorrow uh, while we can still get access through the site to grind out a huge stump from a tree that was cut down a couple of months ago um, billy's going to go through today and bust all the concrete up so he's only just started this morning he's only been on site for an hour you'll see here we're starting to rip all the concrete up. As he rips the concrete up, um, one of our carpenters here on site, Jesse, he'll come through, he'll put temporary braces on the post, so we'll support the house as we work our way through it to make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, he'll get it all broken up today, and then tomorrow, as per schedule, we've got a low-sided tipper coming, and then he'll spend the next two days loading them up and running the concrete to the dump. All the concrete on our sites, well, all the rubbish, so all the rubbish we've taken away. So everything we've stripped out from downstairs and upstairs that goes to the dump in our trailer, uh, we, all, we take it to BMI. So BMI is a recycling station um, and it all gets recycled. So whatever can be salvaged, the, the steel, the timber, um, it all gets separated and recycled, which is awesome, good for the environment, stops it all going in a hole in the ground. Um, and then also, so all this concrete that Billy's ripping up today, um, That'll go to one of two dumps um, on the south side of Brisbane here where we're working at the moment. Then we'll get completely recycled. So it's really good in the building industry now. You've got so many options to take your materials. You do pay a little bit more for it, um, depending on how much stock they've got. But all this concrete gets crushed up, recycled. They take all the reinforcing steel out of it. And then it gets used for drainage gravel, temporary driveways, um, large aggregate. Um, a, a huge variety of uh, materials. So they, I think they make up to five or six types of products out of the recycled concrete, which is fantastic. Again, it's a huge amount of waste that isn't going back into the ground um, and it's getting reused. So we actually buy some of it back from the place we take it to for our drainage gravel. Uh, when we're on jobs that need a temporary driveway, we buy their 50 to 75 mil, the big stuff, and that becomes our temporary driveway. Um, we use it for all our uh, drainage gravel behind our retaining walls and all that sort of thing. So a lot of effort going into recycling on most jobs, on definitely on our jobs, because we um, we make sure we take it to places that are putting in the effort and are recycling it. 
and we're trying to play our part in being more sustainable and, and that sort of thing. But guys, that's pretty much it on this one at the moment. As you can see from the other day, there was uh, two bedrooms, bathroom, stairwell, study, laundry down here. It's all gone. Um, it's, it's, we're starting on the next stage. So we're getting this house ready for uh, the house lifter. They're gonna be on site uh, on the 25th, so week and a half away. Um, and we'll lift this old girl up and then we'll start on our new works underneath. But it's so cool um, pulling these old houses apart because you start to see the story. Um, this house, is like all these old houses have had so many cracks over the years by handyman, by owner builders, by dodgy trades, whatever it is. And this one is no different. So, so some really good examples is it's a bit different. Like this one's got, we've got to be really careful with Billy coming through today, uh, pulling the concrete out. And the reason we've left a couple of stud walls in there is they're load bearing. So rather than put beams in and steel posts when they've built in under this house, they've somehow poured a slab and then put the wall on top of the slab and tried to hold up the floor. The floor's like a wave, it's all over the shop. Um, so we need to basically rip the concrete out up to the edge of those walls, put temporary beam in, acro prop it and support it and then remove those walls. So it's a, there's a bit of a process in doing this type of work safely, um, but that's what we're all about. Making sure our staff are safe, the machine operator's safe and the house, making sure the house doesn't move around too much or, or fall down. So um, then you'll see around the edge, like where it has been done correctly, the post goes through the slab and into a footing. So those ones are nice and solid. And then on the outside over here, we've got the original concrete post. And concrete posts are always bad because they generally only go on the ground sort of six to 800 mil. They're not very stable and they can move around. So we've got a multitude of different ways that this house has been supported that we have to take into account to make sure that the new work is done safely and no one gets injured and we get the house lifted up um, efficiently and accurately. So um, I mentioned at the start, we got Dale the surveyor here on site. So he's, when I say he's marking all the grid lines, we get decent, well, Aaron from AWBD that we do a lot of work with, um, we get a detailed survey done of all the jobs that we do with Aaron uh, to locate the houses on site, renovations, extensions, all that sort of thing. And then Aaron draw, puts grid lines on his drawings. Those grid lines generally relate to the outside perimeter of the house, uh, step, step ins or little bits of the house that change direction and all that sort of thing. They're, those grid lines play a major role in everything in the project. So Dale will go through, he'll mark those grid lines on the boundaries and then we will pull our string lines through those grid lines, plumb them up and use those grid lines to position the house when it gets lifted but also to set our new slab out, to set our new wall framing out after we've poured our slab. And that way everything is accurately accurate, it's as per the drawings, it's what the council's approved. And like I said at the beginning, we can get the surveyor to give us a set out certificate, we submit that to the certifier and there's no issues in the future. Everything has a process, it gets followed and it's ticked off. So on any one of DPS Construction's projects, everything is done correctly. And if, uh, look, if any builder tells you they, they never have any issues, we have issues all the time. It's just that we work through them, we learn from them, and we make sure we implement systems and processes in the future to make sure we knock those things on the head. So, um, and one of those systems and processes for a long time now is getting a surveyor on site to do our set out, mark all our grid lines, and that way it is accurate. So um, guys, a little bit of an update, and uh, stay tuned, because this one's gonna be another great one. If you don't know how a house gets lifted and built in underneath, stay tuned because um, we'll give you the full run through just like we did. Uh, if you haven't seen our videos, go back and check out our Wynnum project. Um, it was the same deal and we'll run you through exactly how all the steps and the processes to lift and build in underneath the house accurately, professionally and to have no issues in the future. Cheers guys.